Today we're going to give an update on biosimilars. We last did a video on this a couple of years ago, but there's been some changes that we thought would be important to discuss. First though, as a review, what are biologics before we talk about biosimilars? So biologics are essentially man-made large proteins, antibodies essentially. They're made using living materials through a complex manufacturing process and they target specific parts of your immune system and different biologics can target different parts of your immune system. In rheumatology, we have lots of different targets. Here though, in rheumatology, we want to talk about what essentially were the first effective biologics and they were against a protein in the body called TNF. And by blocking TNF in the body, we found we were able to better control diseases like rheumatoid arthritis, psoriatic arthritis, and ankylosing spondylitis. With the, these TNF antibodies, TNF blockers, many times we are very successful in putting diseases into remission that 30 years ago we couldn't do that well. Biosimilars. So biologics, TNF antagonists particularly, as I said, have been around for over 20 years. And the first few are starting to lose their patent. And what that allows is for other companies to make similar biologics. But this process is different than you would see with normal generic medications, because in fact, you can't make an exact perfect copy of one biologic to another. So instead, companies make new medications which are biologically very similar to the original biologic. They then have to complete studies that have to show that their new biologic is both equally effective, so it can't be better or worse, and equally safe to the original biologic. If they're able to show this, then they have a new medication which is biologically highly similar or a biosimilar. Now, one of the advantages of biosimilars for the companies that develop it is that it costs a lot less money to develop a biosimilar compared to an originator biologic. And because it costs less to develop, it also is less expensive for patients and for insurance to purchase a biosimilar. So there are a number of different biosimilars on the market now. So as of early 2020, particularly in Alberta, uh, we had biosimilars available for Tanercept or the originator, which was Enbro and Infliximab, but the originator Remicade. Both those medications had been around at that point for uh, just over 20 years. For Tanercept, biosimilars are called Brenzis and Arelzi. And for infliximab, there are a number of biosimilars, Inflectra, Renflexis, Avsola, and Remsema. In 2021, Health Canada, Health Canada approved multiple, eight over the course of 2021, different biosimilars for adalumumab, which the original was Humira, uh, and those all became available in Canada. So medications like Abrolata, Amjavita, Julio, Hiramos, Adacio, Hadlima, Sinlandi, Uflima. All of these are biosimilars of adalumumab. So as you can see, there are many biosimilars that are now available. Are they safe? Yes. Health Canada requires that biosimilars are as effective and safe as the originators. And they really have been available for a number of years, including in rheumatology. For the biosimilars for Embril and Remicade, they've been around for seven or eight years in Canada alone already. Um, and many patients have been on biosimilars now for some time, for the vast majority doing very well. So in North America, the reason why this is becoming a hot topic is that payers insurance are beginning more and more to mandate that patients switch from the original biologic to a biosimilar. And that's even if they're currently doing well on the, their originator product. The reason for doing this is essentially to save money. It saves substantial dollars for insurance companies and government, if government is the one that is the payer. And just, but of course, doing that, when you're, especially when you're doing well, 
switching to something else, even when it's biologically similar and should be the same, can feel scary. What's reassuring is that many studies have been done and they overwhelmingly show that patients do well with switching. And certainly that has been our experience in Canada, in Alberta as well, that the vast majority of patients do very, very well when they switch in rheumatology from an originator to a biosimilar. And there's many patients now who are just being started on a biosimilar when they start on a biologic in general who continue to do well. This is similar to when patients would switch between two similar originator biologics. Again, these are all TNF blockers. They are all similar anyways. But of course, we can't say for sure that 100% of patients, their switches will go well. Anytime there's always a possibility that it doesn't work as well, or that you react different compared to what you were on before. But the vast majority of patients do quite well. If you have to switch, in Alberta this has happened, we understand in Ontario this is going on right now, it's important to work with your rheumatology care team, with your rheumatologist, to ensure that everyone has a good understanding of why it's happening, what to expect, what the options are, and how things will go forward. And that will ensure that you have the best chance of success with your disease, and your overall situation. So again, it's important to make sure you have all the information because even just understanding this helps ensure that it goes really well. And also it's a good check-in to make sure switching to a biosimilar is right as opposed to maybe a different product with a different mechanism of action or so forth. Now, once you switch, your rheumatologist likely will follow things very carefully. And if there are problems, they will like they should be available to go over how to move forward. In Canada and most provinces, there is an exception process that is available that you can work with your rheumatologist to stay on an originator, although in most cases that's after trying a biosimilar to see how that goes it's actually been quite rare where those exception cases are necessary because the biosimilar experience has been very positive. To learn more about biosimilars, we do have information on our website, including a very uh, sizable one pager, which shows all the different biosimilars, what they look like, what the injection device looks like, how, whether they have citrate or not, whether they have latex or not, the size of the needle, all the information which can help you decide which biosimilar might be right for you. So for that information or anything else related to arthritis and rheumatology, feel free to visit us at albertarheumatology.com.